Okay. Good morning on this first day of May, often observed to celebrate the greening of earth and the return of new life. This morning, my morning talk is entitled Flower, F-L-O-W-E-R, Power, and Flower, F-L-O-U-R, Power. Much of life is about what we create. We cr what we create is a way we make meaning of ourselves and for others. When we create opportunities for ourselves to have deeper understandings, or we are teaching and encouraging others to deepen their understanding of themselves and the world we are in the world, we are sharing an important communion. An important communion. We are creating or lengthening the chain of intellectual, psychological, spiritual, and cultural pathways for the greater good. I have been blessed to have been taught and inspired by several teachers. One of the greatest teachers has always seemed to be the natural world. Whether you believe this world was created purely by science or a higher divine power, on many levels, it remains a mystery. And like a flower, it unfolds and we learn more about it with each passing moment. As a teacher myself, today I reflect on the power of flower, F-L-O-W-E-R-R-S, and the power of flower, F-L-O-U-R, in our lives. How they act as models for life, death, and resurrection, and how they feed our hearts, minds, body, and bodies for personal inspiration to participate in creating a greater good. I know that some of my most joyous memories are those I have, I've had in my own backyards and in gardens cultivated to create beauty, joy, and peace in our lives, in the lives of my family, neighbors, and friends. The flowers in these gardens were living examples of divine birth, death, and resurrection. The planting of seeds in early spring allows us to focus on hope as we joyfully watch the seeds grow into flowers and bulbs and perennials resurrect themselves. In the fall or winter, we harvest and some plants in our garden die, but may remain with their roots safely tucked away under the warm earth to rise again the following spring. These are beautiful natural cycles that we enjoy in our natural world. It is this beauty, it is this beauty that in uh, 18, that the 18th century philosopher Emile Kant used to illustrate the, his concept of free beauty, a form of beauty which we respond to regardless of utility or cultural value. It is this beauty that holds our gaze and saturates our awareness. Of course, this beauty is fleeting, but it lingers in the mind long after its passing. It has an uplifting and cleansing effect similar to the resurrection of Christ for Christians. Each spring, it symbolizes hope and promise of new life, life that is eternal on our beautiful blue-green earth providing we work towards keeping it that way. The artist Claude Monet was so captivated and inspired by the beauty of flowers that he remained in his garden even while soldiers invaded during World War II. Sigmund Freud also had a great love of flowers and became an amateur botanist. He was fascinated by the hold that beauty could have over us. The enjoyment of beauty, he wrote, has a particular mildly intoxicated quality of feeling and while beauty cannot protect us from suffering it can compensate for a great deal shamir shahir shahar a professor of neuro aesthetics believed that beauty was part of our biological makeup he introduced beautiful mathematical equations to a group of mathematicians as a cerebral source of beauty. I agree with him, as I have experienced the beautiful smiles of elated children in mornings at school when they, when they solved 
a, su a Sudoku puzzle or have had an aha moment during their math work. The oldest flowers were found 23,000 years ago at the Apollo 2 site on the shores of Galilee, the same sea where Christians believe Jesus have, had walked on water. Palm storms and made Peter and Andrew fishers of men. It is, with, it is where John the Baptist baptized Jesus, where Jesus fed the masses with loaves and fish, and where he gave his Sermon on the Mount. The point is that those who lived in, that, in the area at the time of Christ gathered flowers. Sineco, Sinecio Glo Glocos, I'm sure <laughs> I mispronounced that. <laughs> Small yellow flowers, not for culinary or medicinal purposes, but instead for spiritual ritual. This could be compared to the Unitarian Universalist ritual of the flower communion created by Norbert Chapek, 1870 to 1942, the founder of the Unitarian Universalist Church in Czechoslovakia. These, these two Czechoslovakian plates, which were in my family's home, I hold up, one has bread and one has roses. I offer you those today, both. I hope you can share in having bread and roses in your life today and every day at home. If we were in church, we would have a communion with them, but we can imagine a virtual one right now. Um, so uh, one can imagine those on the Sea of Galilee sharing in either, in either type of sacred ritual. And now that some COVID restrictions have been lifted, more and more people are gathering at their churches again to partake in communion, whether it be bread or it be flowers or it be both. When Norbert Topek created the flower communion, he felt a need for a symbolic ritual that would bond people more clearly together. The format had to be one that would not alienate anyone who had left other religious traditions. The traditional Christian communion service with bread and wine was unacceptable to his particular membership of his congregation because of their strong reaction against the Catholic faith. So he turned to the native beauty of their countryside for elements of communion, which would be genuine to them. The flower communion has ever since been held yearly, just before the summer. I hope we can get to have it in person again in some form. However, I refer to it this Sunday, May Day and Spring Talk, as I am speaking about flowers, new life and rebirth. Spring as a time where we un unwrap the flowers. Springtime as a gift of renewal. I also feel that as part of our renewal, we as Unitarian Universalists should find a pill or two in our garden to dedicate it to forgiveness. We need to review our bias again our bias against Christianity or we may not overcome any pain it may have caused us. We cannot remain apart in a world that was quote given as a garden unquote. Nor can we let the Sea of Galilee be mined for coal deposits and the darkness of greed of man deplete the sacred site revered spiritually by those who value nature and Christianity and Judaism and Islam. We must see that there are many Christians who are revising and renewing their own faith communities and they wish to integrate their communities, providing more seats at the community at the communion table for all people. Communion is a sacred ritual and if COVID has taught us anything, it is that dividing to conquer does not work and never will. We as Unitarian Universalists must not throw out the baby with the bathwater, if you'll excuse the pun. 
but instead find it in our hearts to find that petal in our garden to open our communion table to all include including all those who have historical roots in the christian faith or in any faith for that matter dualisms tend to create div divisiveness while inclusion to tends to foster trust and abundance I enjoyed the fact that last year our membership committee found a way to honor the flower communion and celebrated by delivering a packet of seeds to each congregation uh, member's home. I'm also pleased that all places of worship in our communities have reopened and may each place of worship for all religions experience a greater attendance and renewal of spiritual communion. Whether masked or unmasked, humanity must acknowledge its bias and actively work to reduce it in order to build communities that can truly flower. Sharing inspiration and the knowledge that even though we may not have been baptized or confirmed in the Christian faith, we are still invited to receive communion. We all, we, with all the world's religions, as they are invited to receive it with our, our church. There is no reason that anyone should die due to their belief in faith as Dr. Chopik did in 1942 at Dachau when he was executed at the hands of the Nazis. There was also no reason why so many genocides throughout the world, the world's history, should have occurred. And please forgive me for not listing them all here. This morning's message but instead, we listen to spring has now unwrapped the flowers. Please take a piece of bread and eat it or a flower petal from your plate or garden. I have placed them on the plates that I showed you because I felt it was important to share that symbolism. As we walk, may we work to do what we must do and what, however we must labor to increase the beauty of the earth, increase inclusion, and truly be without bias so that we can plant and grow flowers in our hearts, minds, and gardens. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to my talk this morning and for coming to be part of our service.